You know what it is, man. We here, man. First episode, English majors. It's been a long time coming, but we're here, man. Shout out to everybody making this possible. You can't see them right now, but they making it so you can see me. So yeah, English majors, if you don't understand the concept, that's what I call people that rock with me. If you rock with me in any capacity, if you use language to get what you want on a daily basis, fuck it, you an English major. That's what I'm saying. And also, my whole thing is, man, there's no reason not to know shit. So it's a lot of stuff I don't know. So I'm gonna be learning right here while y'all learning shit, while I'm learning shit, we learning shit. And it's just gonna be great. Cause like I said, it's no excuse not to know shit. Like that just don't make sense. We got the internet. How the fuck you don't know? How you in school and you failing? Cheat. Cheat. How, how you failing, bro? My little brother used to tell me my grades bad. I said, how? You could Google anything, bro. They got the teacher's book online. Like I said, there's no reason not to know shit, but this is the initial English Majors episode, and what better way to start it off with the topic of the week, the month. You see it, man. You see it on the board. Beef is what's for dinner. It's what's people eating on right now, man. I don't know how y'all want to take this, but here we go, man. Let's dive into it. Y'all see it. We right here in the office, man. This is where we break down whatever we talk about. Yeah, and you see the books. I got the book. I'm not like LeBron. I don't just read the first page. Um, so look, hold on, man. I got to talk to Jeff. Jeff, you drew these, right? Yeah. Okay, this is Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> this is Jesus <laughs> versus a club promoter. <laughs> oh, that's Kendrick and Drake. Okay, okay, okay. And this is... Oh, that's 50 at Ja Rule? Okay. He look like Tyrone Biggums. He look... <laughs> Hold up. Okay, that's Nas and Jay-Z. Nas gained some weight, didn't he? Well, Nas, that's King's disease. That's, <laughs> that's all that eating. He got the gout, don't he? Okay, Biggie Tupac, we got that. Who the fuck is that? Let me... Who is that? Help me. Oh, yeah, you, you, I wasn't going to get that, buddy. I wasn't going to get that. He looked like a South Park character. And Gucci Man looked like Baby Keem. I don't know what's going on. Look, man, these are all historic rap beats. We going to start off top, man. Kendrick and Drake. I don't know what y'all heard. I don't know what y'all saw, but I, I, think, I think Kendrick took it home, man. If you got people dancing and crip walking and... They playing the game at the shoot around at the playoffs, and they calling you a PDF file in the song. That's crazy. That's crazy. Don't shoot me. Shoot me. I wanna be, I wanna be in one of these beefs. Put me in a 50 or job beef where somebody got to die. You come on, man. Come on, man. And it's probably a minor. How was that in this? When Drake heard that, man, I know he told some shit up. I would have told some shit up, man. That's crazy. I, I, I mean, take it how you want to, but I, I don't appreciate the fact that, you know, people saying Drake lost the beef and light-skinned people are down. Like, we all together. I wasn't in the studio. I would have told him, say, say some other shit. Leave that, leave, leave Ken first of all, I knew to leave Kendrick alone because the nigga rapping different voices. Kendrick only made one song. All them other songs was all the other th people that's in Kendrick. Mr. Morale had a diss. Kung Fu Kenny had a diss. Everybody had a diss. Kendrick only made one song. I think Kendrick was only on the like that. I think that's it. Everything else was alter ego. Don't fuck with a nigga that's got an alter ego. You're not going to win that beef, man. I'm telling you. Um, but yeah, stop putting us all in the category. Drake, Canadian. And hey, look. I don't stick up for all light-skinned people. If they do something, if they get lost, they lost. They got their ass whooped. All skin folk ain't your kin folk. And I'm not knocking Drake. I think Drake had a hell of a run. And I think y'all wrong for the way you did him. Because now nobody fuck with Drake. Nobody fuck with Drake? All right, cool. Really? Nobody fuck with Drake? Before, y'all was trying to be the nigga. Y'all was buying them little ugly Nike shoes he had. He did make some little nursing shoes. I said, Drake, come on, man. 
You didn't help. You didn't help it when you came out with 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 a grade school girl shoe. That didn't help nothing with the beat or nothing. What do you let? Don't that is, you saw them? Can we put them up? Can we put the shoes up? Can we show the shoes? That's what we wear. <laughs> this is why he said they not like us. If you put these on and you ain't checking blood pressure, I don't know what you're doing. Look, man, this beef shit is out of hand, man. I, I, I do kind of blame Cat Williams. I feel like he cranked it up at the top of the year, uh, just going on Shannon Sharp. Um, now we got other beef just outside of rap beefs. People go on Shannon Sharp and then beef with Shannon Sharp after being on the show that you was on. Why you ain't beef up when you was on the show? That's what I'm saying, man. Y'all got to be in the moment, man. Y'all got to stop. See, that's the thing. The new generation is too subliminal. It's too subliminal. We go back to these older beefs. Tupac Biggie. What, what, what Pac say at the end of the song? Fuck Biggie. Fuck bad boy as a staff, record label, and as a motherfucking crew. If you want to be down with bad boy, fuck you too. I didn't have to watch a video essay. I didn't need a nigga to explain to me who Pac was talking about. The only nigga I didn't know he was talking about, we said, Chino XL, fuck you too. I was like, who the fuck is Chino XL? Chino, Chino XL probably got more listens from Pac saying fuck him than he did from the promotion from his label. That's some hell of a promotion. Now, another thing with this beef shit, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. The beef shit, I'm glad it's back to rap, but for the longest it has not been rap. And it's been dangerous. So I feel like if you fuck with beef, you got to fuck with niggas dying too. You got to fuck with niggas getting killed. You can't say, yeah, we, we wanted all to be on music, but when was the last time the beef was on music? Look at these young artists. These drill rappers, these people that spin in the block, they not making beef songs. That's just songs. They really won't diss you until you dead. That's when the diss song come out. Ain't that a bitch? You made a diss song after the nigga died. He ain't even here. They make songs to play at a nigga funeral that they killed. Do you know how heinous that, like, y'all laughing, but the shit is sinister. It's not cool, bro. You done killed the nigga, put a nigga in the ground, and you ride by the funeral playing the diss song that he ain't get to hear laugh. That's crazy. That's crazy. So I hope y'all understand what comes with the beef and don't try to put it all on us. Black people ain't the only people beefing. Women out here beefing. White people beefing. What you think politics is? That's what that shit is. Joe Biden and, and Donald Trump, they about to have a, a showdown. They might, they might do a debate. I don't know. They not that different. They not that different. Trump loved to say that shit too. He's sleepy. He's tired. I know he doesn't want to be, he's, he wants to go to sleep. I'm like, bro, you sleepy too, bro. You old as shit too. You just popping Adderalls and staying awake and shit. Like, you're tired, bro. You're, now that he on that trial, he been sleep like a motherfucker on trial. You a cold motherfucker. That's some white man shit. Go to sleep during trial? I, don't, I ain't seen Young Thug blink the whole time he been on trial. Young Thug ain't yawned since that Rico hit. Do you understand? Young Thug make sure he is well rested before he get in that courtroom. Because you know, as a black man, you go to sleep in the courtroom, you wake up in the penitentiary. <laughs> it's a wrap. It's a wrap. You wasn't taking this shit serious? We gonna take your ass down. Listen, let's get into it, man. What's the, what's, who benefiting from the beef? That's what I ask you. Who benefit? Both of them on the same label, right? Not the same label, but the same. It's only what? It's only three labels now, right? It's like four labels in the... First of all, <laughs> the same companies own everything. You thought you was going to a different store. Bitch, TJ Maxx is Marshalls. <laughs> you thought you was doing something different? No, bro. It's the same fucking store. So they both universal. They both universal music, right? It's, it was different. I like what Vince Staple had to say about this, man. If we can, um, you know, Vince Staple had something to say. He said, man, uh, people fighting for this streaming money and all this type of stuff, and we getting excited over beef when they've got rid of all the labels as we know them. There's no more 
There's no more G units. There's no more Murder Inks. It's, it's no more Rockefellers. You understand what I'm saying? It's no more bad boys. It's no more 1017, CTE. All of these things don't exist anymore because they've been folded into other companies and all the time black people getting thrown out on their ass as far as the making money. So it's just something to think about, man. When you think about the beef shit, who's really benefiting from the shit? Is the shit even really what it appears to be? Because I don't know, man. I don't know. I think a lot of people are attracted to beef, and I think a lot of people want beef in their life. Unfortunately, I hate to say it. A lot of y'all want, want beef. You want to have ops. You, you got beef with people that have no idea that they supposed to have beef with you. That's fucking crazy. You walking around, like, listen, understand, man. Having animosity, having anger towards somebody else, that's the same thing as swallowing poison and hoping the motherfucker that you hate gets sick. It's stupid. It's stupid, for real. A lot of y'all in beef because you're competing with people that you're not supposed to be competing with. Old people, stop competing with these young people, man. Y'all old bitches, let them have it. Let them have it. You can't beat these young hoes. You can't. You can't. You can't. I still got it. You still got it, but got it for your age range. Go get it for your age range. That's why you're disappointed. These dudes ain't, ain't, you're looking at the wrong dudes. First of all, you, you didn't got, see, look, this is what I'm going to say, man. Hey, old hoes versus young hoes. Young hoes going to win every time. They going to win. They going to win. They young. You old. They ain't even hoeing how you used to be hoeing. Do you understand? These bitches is fucking for Birkin bags. You fucking for Biggie bags from Wendy's. That's crazy. I'm just being... <laughs> listen, man. Listen, listen. What I'm trying to tell you is... Stop competing. Stop competing. Start completing. Put some shit on your goddamn list and complete that shit. That's how the fuck you compete. You compete by winning. Motherfuckers want to compete in every area but the area that actually fucking matters, man. Motherfuckers want to win at the club. That ain't no win. That ain't no win. You won at the club. How you win at the club? You bought the most bottles? You spent the most money? That ain't no win. I beat you. I ain't spent no money. Still got some pussy. Shit was crazy. <laughs> Am I tripping? Am I tripping? Used to be go to the club and it was, hey man, hey, hey, it's, it's for a good time. Now, it ain't no good time. It's not a good time. It's, it's what can you buy and what can these bitches see you buying while you buying it? Listen. We're gonna break this shit down, man. You guys, I'm on. All right. I'm going to say this, too. Fellas. We got to get back to the to masculine beef. All right? Now, Kendrick and Drake, that shit turned into tea time with Kendrick and Aubrey. And... Just because Wendy Williams ain't able to gossip like she used to, that don't mean y'all take her place. Like, that don't mean y'all start, come on, man. Like, what happened to be, talk about, I'm from, I do comedy. We talk shit. That is what we do. First and foremost, I love to hear some good shit talking. If the battle was just shit talking, I'm all the way there for it. But the minute it comes into, well, your son ain't really your son because, fam, if I got to know your family to understand your rap beef, I don't even know if that's rap beef, man. That's, that's some shit for family court. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, who are you, Maury? Like, you trying to prove, motherfucker? That shit's crazy, man. Listen. Let's get back to it, man. Men being men. Women being women. Bitches being bitches. You understand? You see, that's two separate, that's two separate things. 
There's two separate things. I did not say that's the same thing. That is not the same thing at all. Bitches are not women, and bitches aren't just limited to women, because dudes is bitches too. Absolutely. Every dude in here. <laughs> Every dude in here done did some bitch shit. If you watch it right now, you did some bitch ass shit, man. That girl wasn't returning your text. You did some bitch shit. I'm just gonna go over there. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You did it. We don't mean keep doing it. It mean do better. <laughs> do you understand? Don't let, let them have something, man. Let them have something, man. All oh, y'all freaky ass niggas too. Stay your ass inside. <laughs> for real, no freaky men. No, don't, don't be freaky no more, man. You gonna go to jail. Leave that for the women. Women can be freaky as they wanna be. They can show up with sex toys. Don't you do it. What the fuck are you doing? You going to jail. You a psychopath, bro. She can show up with the little vibrator, little rose. You gonna figure it out. Where the USB at? How, how, how you hook it up? Cool. You show up. Sack full of dicks. You going to jail, bro? You going to jail. It's just that simple. You done put strap-ons next to your real dick. You dicked up like an octopus. That's crazy. You're going to jail. Motherfucker in the mirror jumping up and down. I'm gonna run the train on a bitch by myself. No. It's over for you. You need to be under the jail, bro. All right, man, so look, beefs that I've been in, I don't really get in beefs, but you wind up dealing with how people feel about you. So I'm not one person that's gonna go out of their way to create a beef with anybody, but I can tell you about the time I was in LA and I thought I was fired. I thought dude fired me. First of all, I thought dude, first of all, you have to understand, Going from L.A. to New York, going from L.A. from Atlanta is different. First off, you want to know where the black folks at. And then you go where they at and you realize you don't need to be over there. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get my black ass back to where the fuck I stay at because when they start asking all that kind of check in and trying to check your temperature and you got, first of all, I'm not checking in with nobody. Like, you a dumbass if you call a criminal and you go to a new city and you let them know that you coming. <laughs> That's never been smart. Hey, I'm a lick. I'm on my way. You sound stupid and you probably gonna get turned into what the fuck you just became. LA's a different place. I didn't understand the microaggressions and how people play the game out there in L.A. Everything different, man. Even the food they eat. They don't even eat food, bro. They just eat ingredients. They just put a bunch of ingredients in a bowl. They don't even heat that shit up. Ain't no sauce, nothing. So it was a lot of adjusting. I had to get used to a lot of things. But while I'm out there, I was able to work my way into a few writer's rooms. And I happened to be in one writer's room of a very popular... A-list actor happened to be working on some stuff he had for social media campaigns and things. I found my way in the room. I'm getting paid extra good. You have to understand that. The money is great. And when I say the money is good, the money was good at that time. Like now, <laughs> you got to give me more than that. <laughs> but then I was, I was waking up every day and I was, I was headed out there to Calabasas. Let me go get this money. You understand? So, the dude that's running the room, another comedian, won't say his name, but he had a thing of like, he definitely wanted to make it clear that he was in charge. Now, I wasn't really sure who was in charge other than the person that hired me, and the person that hired me is this actor. So I'm like, okay, great, I'm here. But it would be little things in the room. And I noticed that I started, you know, okay, this dude try to, shut down my idea when I bring up an idea. Like, I would bring up an idea and he would be like, nah, that's not gonna work because whatever, whatever, whatever. Nah, that can't work because I don't think that's a good pitch. So me being me, I'm like, boy, fuck you. 
<laughs> like, you not the dude. You know what I'm saying? You want us to think you the dude in this room, and maybe you are. I don't know how the fucking hierarchy works. I just know I'm here. So whenever we would get in front of the actor, I would pitch the same shit I just pitched that he said no to. And I would see the look on his face like, didn't I tell you not to say that? But then the actor would be like, that's a great idea. Yeah, I like something in that vein. Maybe we could do something like that. So then I just look back at him like, oh, bitch ass boy. Yeah. Told you, I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Like, I'm here for a reason. And my point is this, man, whatever the fuck got you in there, that's what's gonna keep you in there. Don't stop being you once you got in there because you think the culture is different or they not going to say, if I got in there for fucking being funny and talking shit, then that's what the fuck I'm going to keep doing. That's what's going to keep me there. But it didn't keep me there. I got fired. Or I thought I got fired. Got a phone call from the dude that's supposed to be in charge of the room. He said, hey, we don't need you to come in anymore. I'm like, damn. The fuck did I do? Maybe I talked too much shit, but I was left thinking, what the fuck did I do? How did I do this? I, I need this money. You know, I'm out here in LA, I'm trying to make this work. Rent is expensive. And I was racking my brain, worried about what the fuck I might have did. A few months went by, I get a call. They want me to come back out there, work on some other project that they're working on. I get out there. When I tell you the people in the office were so goddamn happy to see me, it didn't make sense to me, because I'm like, I got fired. I thought I got fired. No, the secretary was like, hey, where have you been? We've been missing you so much. Like, everybody dabbed me up. What's up, man? Good to see you. Whoop, whoop. So I'm in there. They showing me the new idea. I see the dude that told me not to come no more, right? Now, I'm in the office with the dude that's above him. The dude is going through the stuff. Now, the dude that told me not to come in no more tried to come in the office while I was in there talking with dude. And when I tell you the coldest shit I ever seen was a white man tell another white man, we don't need you in here right now, and close the door on him? <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> hey, man. Do you understand? Listen, listen. And then to see somebody get phased out that thought they had the ability to phase me out See, you never know how people fucking feel about you, but I could have got, I could have took it, I could have took it there. You do comedy too, I could have caught you coming out of one of these comedy clubs. I'm, I'm being real, you know what I'm saying? You don't know how fucked up I was. I wasn't that fucked up. But two more checks. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you gonna see me, ski masked up. I'm on my Project Pat shit. You gotta understand, Mr. Don't Play, finna lay the smack down. So, my point is this, man. Keep doing what the fuck you doing. And don't worry about whatever the fuck anybody else got in their mind about what you can't do, where you ain't supposed to be. Wherever the fuck you at, that's where you're supposed to be. What's for you is for you. Your path is your path. Can't nobody take it from you. Can't nobody take it from you. Now, I've gone on to do big business with this person. You understand? With this actor. And you know who I haven't seen at all? Buddy that told me not to come in no more. You understand? So, hey man, if the best way to handle any beef is fucking succeeding, man. Stop competing, start completing. You start completing a bunch of projects and I guarantee you put our resumes up. The dude that told me not to come no more versus the shit that I done did. And I guarantee you, you got to scroll through mine like this. And I guarantee he is going to go down and, and bounce a little bit. You know, when you scroll and it ain't no more scrolling. You know, when you try to scroll down and it just come back, it, it bounce a little bit. That, that's where he at, man. So, hey, man. It's my little story time for now, man. We come back. These just little shits. I feel like I should share stories. And plus, I like telling goddamn stories. You never know who it might help. It's a bunch of stories that didn't help me. Some of these stories might be the stories that helped me from other motherfuckers that told the story. I might have other motherfuckers come and do story times. I'm not paying them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not paying them, bro. I mean, you can come, bro. Like, you know, it's a testimonial.
So, you know, hey, and I know I said earlier, I don't really have many beefs, but now that I think about it, I have. I, I've been fired from every job that I ever have, just about. That's beef. You don't know beef like that till you go to you at work and you know they finna fire you. It's a different vibe, bro. People you ain't never seen start coming to your office. Oh, so you're Clayton. Okay. And then they leave and you're like, bitch, what was that about? Yeah, you finna get fired. Sometimes I did not got fired, I just left. I knew what the fuck was going on. You're not gonna fire me at the end of the day. Fire me up top. Let me know. You know how many jobs I done had? I done did so much bullshit, man. There been a dishwasher. I had a waited table. Boston Market. Target. Got fired from that bitch. They said I was stealing ices. <laughs> Who the fuck steal ices, man? I ain't steal no icy. They said I was stealing ices. Bitch, I got a refill. He was, he was serious about this shit, too. He was so serious. He was the loss prevention manager, and he was like, I totaled it up, and basically, if you've had an icy for every day that you've worked, you've been working for us for 90 days, that's $900 and 68. I'm like, bro, $900 worth of ices? You tripping, bro. First of all, I've been working here for 90 days. I haven't worked here 90 days, dumbass. I only work weekends. This was in high school, man. Fired me for still ices. Where else I work, man? What I said, I was at the carving station, rotisserie shit. Yeah, Boston Market did that shit. Worked in the fucking bookstore, worked in the book video store. Worked in the camp after school program shit. Worked in the circus. The black circus. Yeah. See, he don't know about that. He over there. The white man confused. <laughs> He's smiling without showing his lips. I know he lost. He was like, hmm. <laughs> yeah, you don't know. That no, was just bullshit. That's the black circus, universal circus. You don't know about that? Man, I was in the circus, man. Yeah, that ain't no shit you're supposed to do as an adult. <laughs> you're supposed to run off and join that shit when you were a kid. I was not prepared. That shit was dangerous. I smoked too much weed. I could have died, bro. I smoke weed and I'm around elephants. That ain't safe. Elephants is flirtatious like some big bitches too. I don't know if you know this. I don't know if you know this. They have long eyelashes. They all got lashes. Go look at an elephant eye. Show. Look at an elephant eye. They got lashes, bro. And they flirtatious. They'll touch you with that dick nose. And that's, that's scary. It's 10 a.m. in the morning. You get tapped with a with a fucking pachyderm. Man, this shit was crazy, man. All type of shit. Lots of African people. Shout out all my African people, man. Folks was over here didn't know no English. For real, dude ain't know nothing. He knew three phrases. I, I did, it took me three months to realize he ain't know English. He knew yes, no, and oh wow, that's it. I learned if you know yes, no, and oh wow, you can make it in America for three months before anybody catches on, bro. His timing was impeccable. He was like, oh, uh, he would let you answer the shit for him. Oh, uh, when we, I'm like, when we get paid? He like, yes. I'm like, all right, bro. He, he asked me when we get paid. He didn't ask me shit. I asked myself for him. That's the kind of shit you be having to do, but that show you how hard people work to goddamn make it. I, don't, I couldn't make it nowhere if I couldn't speak the language, man. What else, that circus shit? That shit was real. If you see me in the circus, drop a comment, man. We came to your city, set up in the mall parking lot, probably. The animals get away sometimes, too. Be a zebra on 75. They tried to make me go get the motherfucker one time. They said, hey, you think you can go grab this? I said, fuck no, I don't work with the animals. <laughs> I liked animals till I had to be around them. Tiger shit, the worst smelling shit in the world. Worst shit. That shit crazy. <laughs> I'm talking about that shit would clear the goddamn tent. 
That's why cats bury their shit. That's why cats like women. They try to hide the shit they be doing. You understand? Because that's how fucked up the shit they doing is. It's foul. It's foul. It'll turn your stomach. It'll make you vomit. If you knew what your bitch was really doing, you would be sick. That's why dudes is dogs. We're going to shit right there in the front yard. And then come to the door. Let us in. <laughs> What's that shit out there? Yeah, I did it. We in there. You got to understand how this shit works. See, I was just out there learning shit. And, but yes, I have had lots of beef. How you handle beef at the workplace is work for your motherfucking self. You work for you. Even while you working for somebody else, work for you. Use their resources. Get fired for doing some shit to benefit you. You can get fired for anything. Get fired for goddamn whatever. You use their shit to make you goddamn, you edited your video on their computer. Y'all in here laughing because y'all be doing this shit. I know. <laughs> Everybody in here got a mixtape coming out. They be in there editing the fuck out of this shit, putting crap. Okay, I'm gonna make it flames gonna be on my head. No. That shit crazy. But yeah. If you ain't working towards something else, then get used to goddamn having beef. Because you always gonna have beef if you work for somebody else. And nothing wrong with working for somebody else, but work towards whatever the fuck you wanna work towards. That's what I'm here for, man. Told you, this is like the guidance counselor's office, if they was real with you. They would have told a lot of y'all, boy, just drop out now. You ain't doing shit no way. Get the fuck out. Get, get to working. You could be a hell of an HVAC man. You drop out sophomore year. By the time it's time to be a senior, man, hey, I'm telling you. You get your heat and the air license, you're going to be a cold motherfucker, man. You got to try something different, goddamn. Get you a different hustle. That's what I had to do. This comedy shit, I had to figure it out. I had been talking shit too long for free. Too long, but you do it long enough, you get good at it. What they say, 100 hours, right? 100 hours. 100 hours a year, right? 18 minutes a day. And that puts you in what, like the top 10% of motherfuckers that do whatever the fuck you're probably doing. And if you do that for a few fucking years, that's gonna put you in the top goddamn 1% of whoever fuck, like, who don't got 18 minutes a day? But what you got it to do? You understand? You, do, you can scroll on your phone. You a cold scrolling motherfucker. You the best at scrolling through that timeline. Can't nobody yank through that timeline like you. You a bad motherfucker. You wake up in the morning. Don't even get out the bed. Just be on that bitch. You say, Ugh. You cold as shit. If only it was, I don't know what you could do with that. But hey, maybe you'll figure it out. And that's it, man. Story time. Stories to help you when you going through a time. That's it. We can cut it. Yeah. And now it's time for uh, office hours, man. This is where I get to actually take your questions, man. I'm giving out questions and advice. I don't have no answers. And if you listen to me, you, you, you fucking up already, man. Don't just be listening to motherfuckers on the internet. That's your problem now. That's why you're in trouble, listening to motherfuckers on the internet. They just be saying anything. I be saying anything sometimes. But no, I really want to help people the best way I can. So this is part of it, man. Office hours, man. You know, if you were to go to your counselor or principal, they have office hours. This, this is like the principal's office, but not the principal like the head of the school, like principal, like a man of principal. They spell different. You didn't know that. I know you didn't know that. But now you know. So, yeah, let's get to it, man. And, hey, like I said, I don't have all the answers. The best I can give you is a little advice. Try to help you out. Let's see what we got. All right. Dear Clayton, I saw on Shaq's podcast the other day the baby saying a rapper hit him up for fake beef just to drive up the numbers. 
That made me think of a two-part question. How would you feel if we found out any of the classic rap beefs we grew up on were fake just to sell records? Two, if you had to fake beef with any comedian to push up your numbers, who would you fake beef with? Love, Andrea from Atlanta. First of all, um, that's dumb to, to, to get into beef with somebody to drive the numbers up. What if you lose? You lost. Like now nobody, now you even got less numbers than you had before. What if you destroyed your career trying to play around? Then what you gonna do? You gonna meet back up with the baby and be like, hey man, on the next song, tell him you was just playing. No, it's over. It's over. I don't understand the purpose of fake beef. What if I found out a classic rap beef was fake? I wouldn't be too surprised. Some of that shit definitely could have been. Some of that shit was real. Some of that shit was real now. That 50 Cent and Ja Rule, that was real. That was really real. Because they still don't like each other. <laughs> Let that man alone. Anytime Ja Rule fuck up, 50 celebrate. Like, that is the... <laughs> He is the pettiest motherfucker in the world. He be doing little shit, buying all the tickets to Ja Rule concerts. So don't nobody be there. What kind of shit is that, man? He the type of nigga buy your favorite restaurant and then tell them not to serve you no more. <laughs> I was just here yesterday. I know we got new management. And they said, we can't seat you. That's, you don't want to, some people, hey man, some people you need to leave that beef alone with. 51 of them, he seemed like, how y'all all owe money to 50? That's the last nigga I would borrow money from. One of the few niggas in the industry that could whoop your ass, you go borrow money from them. What's that one boy that owe everybody money, YK Osiris? I know he ain't borrowed no money from 50. 50 would've went and got that shit. <laughs> They said Floyd in Dubai, too. Is he, did he come back? They said they had him over there. They held him over there because he owes some shit. You heard this? That's, hey, that's real beef. You over there with them sheiks? Because they play too much. You know what I'm saying? They'll throw a tiger in the pool with you. Ha, 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 get over there, Floyd, get in. No. Bro, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? Motherfuckers driving around in Bugattis with a cheetah in the front seat and shit. And you stuck over there. I know he won't come home, man. He be trying to make it seem like it's fun, but he always be by himself. <laughs> that shit look lavish, but where the hoes at, man? Wait. <laughs> All right, let's get to this other question, man. What else we got? Oh, what is it? If I had to fake beef with any other comedian, I wouldn't fake beef with nobody. i really beef. I would. That's the only way I'm going to do it. We're going to have to go all out. We're going all in. Cause you can't fake no beef, like you know what I'm saying. Like now we just talking shit. That's a roast. You can see that all day, every day. You can see a roast, and that's I feel like that's the comedy equivalent of battle rapping, and that's what you should, you know, you should look for that if you want to see comedians go at it. But a beef with a comedian, that's utterly ridiculous. You understand what I'm saying? So, hey, that's my answer for that, Andrea. Not that you asked a dumbass question, but you asked a dumbass question. <laughs> Hold up. We got more questions, right? I know we got something, right? What up, though? Yeah. Good plan. We always talk about rap beefs, but we all know beef is everywhere. What are some of your favorite non rap beefs? Frank from Philly. Frank from Philly. You don't get your hard working ass out of here. That motherfucker eat out of lunchbox, don't he? I'm Frank from Philly. Work construction and lay concrete. Hey, Frank from Philly. My favorite non rap beefs. I don't know, man. It's so many, man. Publix versus Kroger. That's crazy. That shit crazy. Because Kroger really cheaper. They be having the deals. But Kroger also, it just ain't, it ain't, it ain't right. It's always a little dirty. <laughs> Why Kroger ain't never, like, you know what I'm saying? None of the carts right. It, Kroger always just a little dirty. And they don't really care at Kroger. They don't tuck their shirt in, bro. They be like, what you want? Like, that's, that's Kroger. Publix. 
Them motherfuckers act like that shit is a bistro. <laughs> this shit smell like vanilla and cinnamon in this bitch. And they make the best goddamn sandwiches, so it's just certain shit. It's what's your price range, what's near each other. What other beefs I like, man? Um, shit. Magneto versus Professor X, man. We talking X-Men. I'm a motherfucker, you know, Marvel. That's, that's, that's from Hawkeye, you know what I'm saying? I'm a fan. Magneto versus Professor X, because them niggas really should be working together. If that's your homeboy, float him around. <laughs> Why is he in a wheelchair? Y'all homeboys. One of the big X-Men should put that nigga on his shoulder like a parrot. Why do he got a school? He could just put the shit in their head. <laughs> the fuck we gotta go to class for? Just tell us the shit, nigga. We gotta go to class to be X-Men? Give us the information, you stingy motherfucker. You charge your tuition? That's crazy. Who else? What other bees? Nine rap. Um, oh, I gotta go with the goddamn um, the American Deli versus JJ. Because they two different things. But they excel at what the fuck they are. This might not even, this is regional, so y'all might not know this, but yeah. And then what other, what other non rap beefs? Y'all ain't got nothing in here? Shout them out. Nobody? Sports beefs. You got sports? Um, like Jordan, Jordan and Pippen? Jordan and Isaiah? Jordan and Pippen? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> well, that nigga losing on so many fronts. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, son, scoop your bitch. That's crap. Stop. Stop! <laughs> Fuck the scoring titles. That's unnecessary. What kind of... Hey, man. That's... Okay. Jordan versus... Generally not Jordan versus Pippen. And I don't do the Jordan versus LeBron because you can't... Come on, man. Jordan versus Isaiah. That's, that's lions and hyenas. They ain't never gonna be cool. That shit... Did they piece it up? They ain't never piece it up. They ain't gonna piece it up. He told him he couldn't be on the Olympic team. That's some whole shit. <laughs> I'm an Olympian? And now I can't? That's fucked up. I don't want to play with him. You ain't got to play with me. When I go out, you go in. <laughs> the fuck I got to play with you for? I come off the bench. That's cra you would, That's fucked up, Mike. Mike, you need to stop that shit, man. Get right. Leave them white bitches alone. Get off the golf course. <laughs> Apologize to all the niggas you hurt feelings. You hurt a lot of niggas' feelings, bro. You hurt a lot of niggas' feelings. Chameleon there. That nigga still hurt. <laughs> he done hurt so many people's feelings, bro. All right, here we go. We got a question from a young lady. She wants to remain anonymous. Not that that matters, but she wants to know what's the best way to get back at an ex after a breakup. And, uh, bitch, I don't know. But don't do no shit that hurts you. Don't cut your hair. That's stupid. Don't never do no shit thinking it's going to make that nigga upset because he, he don't give a fuck. He been not gave a fuck. Work on you. Stop trying to get back at people. That's the part. You can't get back at an ex. They an ex for a reason. That's your get back. Your get back should be progress and succeed. Now, if you fuck up and fall off more, bitch, it might have been you. <laughs> you might have been the problem the whole time. You've been holding yourself back and you're trying to blame it on other people. Trying to get back at your ex, get back at you for picking your ex. That's your fault. Worry about being the best you and Everything will probably fucking fall into place. Yeah. We done? <laughs>